stream. Pop-Up Jim Fannin Show with J.B. Beverly's in the house. This is the web page. This is the Twitter page. And this is J.B. Beverly. Now have a conversation with him. Touch him up on the channels if you see it. All right. J.B. Beverly. Man, it's been... Um, I've been looking forward to getting a hold of you, man. So I appreciate the time. Let's see. Let's get you up here. Uh, everyone else can see you. Um, here we go. It's like I'm doing this for the first time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Full screen that shit. There he is, my man, JB. Hacking darts as normal. Co-host of the co-host and producer and uh, I don't know, engineer of the Beef Squad with Jim Goad. Um, wasn't acquainted with Jim Goad. Heard his name quite a bit on Censored.TV as a suggested show content. And then when you guys came on, man, I can't put I can't put the B Squad down. It's great, man. So nice job and great work on the technical end of stuff, man. Uh, well, shit, I appreciate that, uh, especially given the complications. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great show. I have a lot of fun. Jim and I have a good chemistry and, uh, you know, several years of friendship at this point. So it, it comes pretty natural. Is he one of those guys, like it's one that you try and think of a guy that makes you laugh more than Jim Goad and you can't? So he's like always just got you in stitches. He's a, he's up there. He has a, uh, how shall I say, uh, unique wouldn't even be the word. He's got a real one of a kind sense of humor and he can deliver the coldest imaginable stuff just bone dry and uh mm -hmm. you'll never see it coming you know half the time so he that's where he gets me it's it's that it, he can do it you know so steadfast and quick and uh he'll keep you on your toes man he's not you know he's not somebody you can have a uh a half asleep conversation with that's for sure really where'd you guys hook up where'd you guys meet how long you known him in the in the, in the twitter sphere really uh, i got to dm and uh yeah he he turned me on to some of his music i i knew he had sang on the uh big red goat cd <clears throat> some years ago the trucker stuff and whatever but um he was sending me some of his uh country and i guess rockabilly covers and, and things and I, I i got to really hear the nuance of his voice and and you know he can he can he can hold a tune i didn't sure. know he so, was uh, a performer an artist or a oh, musician cool. yeah if you if you listen to uh if you watch beef squad the the closing credits uh, okay version of psycho i played all the instruments and that's him singing oh, wow you didn't know that no i had no idea no yeah yeah no jim jim can fucking croon man for sure cool well you've got an interesting background in music as well and i love your studio setup man i don't know how you got the virtual background working that well but it's got me com yeah. completely uh convinced that you're sitting in your studio right now and you don't have to clean everything up that's that's great just throw the virtual background on and uh, like i said to you just before we started rolling live here that split screen that you know you've got and i joked the other day in a promo for doing uh, my show for you uh, I don't know that these guys have ever been in the same room together because you're certainly not on site together, right? No, we do yeah. it remotely. He's in the Atlanta area, and I'm in eastern North Carolina. So yeah, the way you do the uh, virtual background so that it's it's split, but you don't know yeah. it is. You need to just appear on top of it. That's a nice job, man. I've got a long way Good, to go man. with that OBS and stuff. That's what we were going for, was trying to make it as uh, cheatingly cohesive as possible. Yeah. So. 
So tell us a little bit about your music background, man. It's interesting. You've led and started and and killed a bunch of bands. It looks like I don't know how many are set <laughs> yeah, I definitely for. Definitely killed my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many are set for reunions, but uh, yeah, how when you start that out, young? Yeah, I started playing in bands. I started playing drums when I was eleven, and uh, that was my first love. And then when I was, I realized when I was in the eighth grade that uh, the drummer was always the last one to get any attention from the girls. I saw a guy out back behind my school, uh, and he wasn't, you know, particularly popular, even good looking, just scrawny, you know, looked like, he looked like fucking Evan Dando from the Lemonheads, man, just this kind of tall, like, nerdy dude with glasses and long hair, and greasy hair, he never washed his hair, <clears throat> but he came to school one day with a guitar, and uh, he might have known three chords, but he sat out back, and he pulled the guitar out, next thing you know, there's a dozen girls just sitting there, you know, the Indian style, they're chins in their hands you know watching him and uh in total awe and that the, the light bulb went off pretty you know went on pretty hard in my head it was like okay that's that's how i can finally get rid of this whole virgin thing <laughs> so i started playing guitar wow learned the bass when i was in the 11th grade and then uh learned some piano uh learned a little bit of banjo uh you know i can can even I could probably fake my way through a song on a ukulele for you, you know. So. Nice. One of those things. I'm just fucking around with my connection here because I didn't turn the streaming on. You did. <laughs> All right, we're going now anyway. So, uh, yeah, what was the early bands then? Punk? Yeah. <clears throat> First band that I ever played in that actually performed in front of people and, and received a couple rolls of quarters put in the gas tank was a band called the bad habits out of dc mm -hmm. started in uh originally uh the, the early 92 winter of 92 and then uh a couple different incarnations that went to 96 and then in uh uh mid late 97 i joined the murder junkies and uh did that until march of 99 started the wayward drifters my you know countryish rootsy band uh, that winter december of 99 and then uh formed another i guess you could say punk band uh the little white pills out of dc in 2002 and uh, rejoined the murder junkies late in 03 until 2006 and uh yeah and then just stayed stayed on the little white pills never officially broke up uh we, we sort of are on an extended hiatus, I guess. Uh, we're all too uh, too proud to call it dead. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so uh, you get together every five, ten years, play a show or two. and then. But the Wayward Drifters was my mainstay. That's the band that took me multiple times, you know, overseas and uh, got me across this country dozens of times. And uh, I carried that on until uh, 2016 was my last real like real tour uh i tore my rotator cuff into three pieces and spent 18 months rehabbing that and then by the time that was dealt with you know i was editing video and doing other things to keep the lights on here and then no sooner did i get inspired and like okay i'm gonna finish this record and go back on tour and it's like COVID. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm. that's kind of how it went down you know how's COVID kind of affected you outside of the obvious work related stuff performance related stuff obviously you're not doing that stuff anymore but how you've been handling it mentally and how, how's your family been getting mentally, through it? i'm i'm fine you know i'm more concerned about some of my loved ones but i mean i i was before COVID, i was rivaling bigfoot for the social distancing championship <laughs> to begin with so you know, I, I i joke that i've been social distancing for three years so but i mean well, i, I don't need to I wear mean, a I, mask i never I, i've, I've never talked here. to anyone right i've lived here for nine years man i've got three friends within a hundred miles of here you know mm -hmm. and, and, and we're into the same shit it's like motorcycles one of them's into reptiles and it's like you know and i'm i'm i do appreciate being social at least in the sense that before COVID, i would you know jump on the bike and there's two watering holes you know within an hour of here that i'd like to go to where i can catch a sandwich and a beer and, and be around people that don't particularly annoy me provided there's that those people are there and there's a handful of them but you know and I, other than going to a couple of spot i mean i'm not one to go to parties i haven't been to a concert in, since 2016 you know mm. i'm not counting my own of course but I, I haven't gone to a show i i'm 
I, my studio's here. <clears throat> I live, you know, I live here, so I don't really, you know, have a need to go out. Mm -hmm. And unless, unless something really interesting is happening, or I can go uh, wrangle some reptiles or something. You know. Yeah, where are you living now? I live in northeastern North Carolina, uh, the poorest okay. county in the whole state, Halifax County, North Carolina. I live. Mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by two thirds of me is swamp and uh, swamp and marsh. So. And where'd you grow up? I'm from Virginia originally. I <clears throat> grew up between Northern Virginia and uh, the southwestern corner of the state, Wise County, my family's from. And uh, lived in South Carolina for a couple of years when I was a kid. Then my folks split, and my mom's family's all from the D.C. area. So I lived in. Uh, oh, so that's Maryland the D.C. And, connection. Maryland and D.C. for, well, if you combine the two, almost 18 years. And mm -hmm. then I moved to Richmond for a few years, and I moved here, like I said, nine years ago. So. You, now tell me about the snakes. I, I just see your. I should put your Twitter bio, uh, your bio up again. I will do that in a minute. But uh, tell me, what, what are you doing, wrestling, freaking snakes, wrangling snakes? What do, what do well, you call I it? I was gonna say I don't. I don't wrestle them. But, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I got a. I was reptiles when I was a kid, and then uh, several years ago, I met a guy who became you know, one of my lifelong best friends, uh, Dean Repa who owned the uh, Cape Fear Serpentarium in Wilmington. And he pretty much became a mentor to me, trained me. I got to work with, uh, you know, a variety of animals, uh, not just snakes, you know, sea turtles, cro you know, different crocodiles and uh, <clears throat> all that stuff. But snakes were my passion. And, uh, you know, I've worked with the, you know, the baddest of the bad, man, gaboon vipers, black mambas, king cobras, you, you name it. I've, I've probably wiped its venom off the, either off my, you know, off the floor or, uh, clean you know what i mean so mm. I've, I've dealt with a lot of that shit ever get a strike no i've never been envenomated I've, I've had plenty of bites but uh really only once by something uh oh technically venomous and it, i didn't i was a dry bite so no i've, I've never been uh administered anti-venom or put in hospital nothing like that mm. no. but that that will be i've, I've made the joke it's like I've, I've cheated death you know I, I boxed for a little while and ride a motorcycle and gun guy and all this i've been around all this dangerous shit for, for all these years and i've, I've often joked that uh if something's going to take me out considering how my luck has been it'll probably be a snake bite you know i've been around these animals for decades and i've never yeah. heard a bite so if i do ever catch the uh the lethal injection it'll be just that i'm sure you know? <laughs> what how's your luck been what do, you, what do you talk about as far as that goes do you consider yourself a guy that's not fortunate in the luck department i don't know i'm not su too no i mean i'm but... very fortunate in the sense that i'm alive <laughs> <laughs> been in some very dangerous uh d dangerous places and uh really know, i've had some adventures you know between being a poor musician a reptile guy been on the jungles in the woods and been a survivalist and, you know gone hiking through yellowstone and all that kind of stuff so i mean i've you know and uh, i've been uh and there's things I can't talk about, <laughs> so, <laughs> but <clears throat> no, in general, uh, no, I've been, I'm very lucky to be alive and I've maintained my health and everything. So I, I, uh, you know, as far as, you know, uh, romance or, uh, my, any get rich quick schemes, I wouldn't say that I've had the best luck, but you know, right. as far as cheating death, you know, that's, yeah, that's why the snake bite will be what gets me. So you never been married and no kids or what? never been married no children how old are you uh 43 oh yeah you're so you're yeah i know it's 77 year old born so you're just 10 years younger than i am so and i fall in the same category never married no kids but i love the kids man i'm obsessed with them i look after them at church once a month and it's just the preschoolers the two and three year olds are just oh, yeah, i don't you know, know that can be that can be taken the wrong way. oh i know i'm not worried so about that yeah you. nobody's ever gonna be <laughs> afraid of jimmy fan and fucking with their children i'm a big defender of kids actually i mean and i said to i dm'd you just uh <clears throat> you know i don't know you uh at all really other than what i see on the show and you know uh, i i get that a lot of the show is well at least for me as a host you know, you tend to fall into a character like even on the radio show, when I had the radio show, like I'm not Jim Fan and the radio show host. I'm also not Jim Fan and that you see on Twitter and Facebook. Like I don't go around actually saying these things. And so I find that sometimes I slip into, you know, I start to do some comedy bits. You know, if I ever call Gavin's show, I've always got a comedy bit to run past him to get his reaction on it. Right. And, uh, 
But no, uh, I, I'm not afraid of that ever coming up. Nobody's ever going to say, you know, Jimmy's got a problem with kids. I just, I'd love them. I absolutely love them. I think it, I'm, I'm starting to show my uh, age, I think. I'm like a, you know, like a woman that feels like they missed their chance with the kids. Like, I could still have them, I guess, if I found the right girl. But, you know, I'm not married to the idea that I'm going to have them. I just, you know, it's just never happened, you know, for whatever reason. You, would but, you have any, would you have any guilt about, starting a family in your you know early mid 50s you absolutely I mean? like your not kid gets man out of high school and no oh, i'd be the de yeah. best best father i mean I, I always joke to my friends there was one of my buddies that said get out of here like well, what are you two? i can't I even guess, be your I, friend I anymore me, you I can't mean, have I, a I, kid I at your that, age but for me it's like I, w I wouldn't want to be at my kids you know high school graduation no nah, i don't care you know, I just want 15 dialysis. Yeah. No, I just, I fantasize about having uh, control of a human mind for 15 years. You know what I mean? Like just what would that kid be like if I was influencing his life or the, her life for that long? And I don't know. I know they'd have a good sense of humor. Place that's for best. sure. You can't, you can't be around me without getting carved constantly or having some fun. And you know, an ex-girlfriend of mine, actually still one of my best friends, uh, I hang out on the regular. She's got a four year old granddaughter and she, I, well, I just said this the other day. I don't know where I came from. It's like she cleans my soul. She just makes me like brings me down to earth. She's just perfect in every way. So I really enjoy the time with the kids. But yeah, I'm not worried. Well, about you know, that it's weird. That, you know, I've way. I've actually come to appreciate, you know, my um, position within that because I don't have kids, but I, I know plenty of people that do. You know, I'm I'm Uncle JB to a few and a Godfather to two, and uh, I love being around them. But I love the freedom of giving them the fuck back when I'm <laughs> my amusement. You know. It's like okay, you know, you can you can deal with the fuck you, Dad. You yeah. Well, any any of my boys, and now my boys, their kids are way older. But when they were younger, I'd always come over and uh, and get them so wound up, usually close to bed, so and leave them crying, and then be out the door, and they'd be all like, "Jimmy, fucking did it again, and got my kids all wound up before bedtime, and then made them cry before I left." <laughs> the kids always want to screw with me, and they're like, "You know, you want to go, you want to go." I'm just saying right now one of us is going to end up crying and it's not going to be me so i'm just saying it always ends that way so <laughs> before you go any further know what you're getting into yeah so uh no regrets not having a family then i guess no only because up until very recently you know i've made my living on the road and i, and I kind of made a promise as a young guy it's like you know don't bring a child into this world that you're not going to be there to raise mm -hmm. i think that's one of the biggest fallacies on 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 humans you know it's like we, we we don't raise our kids anymore man you know for a lot of people don't and i uh or even in in intact families you know they they trust the damn institutions the educational system they go let their kids get brainwashed hey i'm gonna spend you know three quarters of a million dollars to put you through school but pay no attention to what these assholes teach you mm -hmm. you know that kind of mentality it's like i, I i'd want to be hands-on i'd want my kid you know to be molded into a good human being you know that would be the most important thing and if and if you're making your living doing 200 220 shows a year on the road mm -hmm. you're not there for your kid you're, you're kidding yourself you're, you're watching your kid grow up via well these days you know via youtube videos and skype calls and stuff and, and then i saw that i was on a tour bus with <clears throat> a friend of mine he watched his daughter literally watched his daughter take her first steps by way of a video that his wife had shot at the house and emailed him and stuff and wow to our bus on the laptop watching the kid take her first steps and of course he couldn't have been more proud mm -hmm. but watching it it kind of broke my heart it's like man i don't want that you know not at all i'm glad you mentioned the fatherlessness because i think that's you know i'm intensely political uh, as um you probably are just hanging around with goad i mean he seems to be always have uh, one toe in politics but I feel like this is the number one issue facing us today is fatherlessness. We don't, no one's really talking about it. Um, but you know, if, uh, I know we kind of rigged the welfare system to favor not having a man in the home down in the States. I think it goes back to the sixties. If you can believe that. It does. You're absolutely right. And, um, uh, you know, it's like I DM'd you, what are you passionate about these days? I kind of get an idea of it, where you're going because you know what you talk about on the show, but that, that I'm not sure how we solve that. And, and then you talk about the learning institutions, our media, everything's in, infiltrated by this far left radical, um, 
uh, feminism and uh, perversion of like drag drag queen story time. What the fuck? Are we, grade yeah. three? I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Teaching anal and masturbation and all this kind of stuff. Like, I mean, and up in Canada, we actually had a convicted. Um, oh, I guess he, I don't know if he was a pedophile, but he got caught with child porn on his computer. He wrote the sex ed for the province, the sex ed curriculum. Right. And right. I just don't, I don't know how the we ever see the pendulum swing back. Like I'm recently red pilled over the last five years. I was, you know, I'm a six-time green party candidate doesn't get any more left than that in, in canada and right. then uh you know i'm not 24 anymore that was my first election i've run 10 times but i just uh it, it's been a painful process to come center right because i was on the far left of the political spectrum probably not believing anything that i was selling as far as a candidate goes uh and not realizing it even at the time but I don't know how we come back from this. If the pendulum ever swings back to it, you know, talking to uh, kangaroo yesterday, it's like the mainstream media is so infiltrated with 24 seven lies. And you know, the lies, they've all been debunked and they're all about Trump. And I don't, I don't know how we ever come back from this place. It, it doesn't seem like a good place for me though. We have to define coming back, uh, coming back to what specifically. And I asked that, is kind of a baited question in the sense that this is something that Jim and I talk about a lot and, and we agree on this. You know, I'm not particularly a, a moralist type person. I, I think that, you know, what a self governing uh, adult or two consensual adults care to do, I really couldn't give a fuck less. As long as you're not hurting anybody or fucking with me or my loved ones, I really don't care. Um, that said, I mean, sure, sexualizing children, I have an inherent problem with that, you know, and uh, I think anytime you, you bring people into the fold who can't, uh, either intellectually or legally take up for themselves and yeah you have a problem it's like you know and it's kind of like picking on a handicapped person you know mm. and that kind of shit bothers me but uh as far as going back and uh the whole left right paradigm you know man I, i've lived long enough to see that whoever's got the power they abuse it you know i, I i'm i came of age in the uh you know, Daddy Bush Clinton years and, and certainly was well aware uh, politically and geopolitically of what, you know, the neocons were doing by the time W was in office and this warmongering bullshit. And, and you know, I've, I've, uh, I'm not a fan of any of it. You know, it's something that Jim Godin and I talk about a lot. And it's one of the things that I think bonded us is that we're not, neither one of us are, are team guys. You know, I, I, I think you, you know, uh, as uh, to quote Jim, it's like you, you know you pay attention to people in groups long enough, and you realize, you know that no matter what group it is, you get enough people together, it's going to get fucked up. And uh, you know, I, I don't want any part of it. I, I, I think we certainly need to honor our constitution. We need to honor the law. But I mean, if it doesn't mean anything to our representatives, and we're too stupid to vote them out of office and get people in there who do give a shit, regardless of party affiliation <laughs> or platform ideology or any of that bullshit if you you know I, I hate to say thing i won't say like well i guess you deserve it then but it's like how bad can you feel you know what i mean how, how bad do i feel i mean i know why 28 veterans a day blow their fucking brains out in this country because they come home and they look around and go wait a minute i was willing to get my fucking fingers blown off and my nuts blown off and get killed and left in a goddamn desert for you fucking ignorant motherfuckers mm. i understand it very well you know and so it's it's one of those things where you know, if we're too indifferent or complacent or or in, overindulged and, and brainwashed to to do anything about it, you know, then you know it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. So, I mean, when you say, "How do we get back?" and I don't mean this rhetorically, I say, "Get back to what exactly?" Mm. You know. Well, when I say that, I just think that the pendulum, the political pe pendulum swung so far left where, you know, perversion, we're trying to make that normal with sexualizing our children. Mainstream media lies to us all day. Uh, and it, it's all leftism. It's leftism in our learning institutions, in our uh, courts, in yeah. uh, arts, Hollywood, all left. And then it, the further the left goes politically, the more guys like me that are moderate centrists and, and I really appreciate this conversation because I'm, I'm putting myself in the context of how you're speaking. And I realize that I'm not 
I'm not a party guy either, you know, despite the fact that I was one for a long time, you know, for the Green Party. Uh, they needed a guy like me and a voice and a humor and some debating skills to actually lead and 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 tell people, hey, there's more options out here than just voting for the big two. But just as you're speaking, I'm thinking to myself, you know what also I want to add to it is it's a loss of respect and code. It's almost like in hockey, they hit from behind all the time. Now there's no code because you can't fight. Now um, I see this with Trump. I'm not... I've become a reluctant Trump supporter only because you forced me. I don't mean you. I mean the collective you. You forced me to defend him all the time by lying. And I just can't. I can't sit here and go, well, yeah, he didn't say that. You know, and then, you know, I see the so-called town hall that that he did with ABC. And I'm mortified. I'm embarrassed (laughs) for the host because there... Can you at least have enough respect for the office? I, I get you don't like orange men bad. I get it. But he's right. the president of the United States. The office, the position should, you shouldn't be able to, t- no one would have talked to Barack Obama that way. And sure, you, you know, you're, you're asking people obsessed with power to have a sense of code and honor. And when it comes down to power struggles historically, I don't care where in the world you look. When have people ever maintained a sense of honor or respect? You know what I mean? It's like once the power pendulum, to use your analogy, once that pendulum is in play, all bets are off, buddy. You know what I mean? Historically speaking. And and so uh, I don't think this is any different. I think it's more flagrant because social media has manipulated print and and television and radio media has changed it you know we're we're a click driven society that's how ad revenue is generated right so you know in the olden days i won't say they were ever terribly accountable but they were certainly more accountable when it came to lies and spin and you know perpetuating uh you know bs whereas now uh you know, they, they act with impunity. They, I mean, look at what's happening on Twitter right now with the, the New York Post. Yeah. They haven't been able to post anything in six days because Twitter is, is carrying so much damn water for the Democrat establishment. And again, I'm not a Republican. I'm just paying attention. Mm-hmm. If this was happening, if this was the inverse, okay, if the media was sucking Trump's dick and throwing whomever the, the Dems were running under the bus mm-hmm. unfairly, I'd be making yep. the same argument. I, I feel the about, same you know, way. Because I... I'm a fair play kind of guy, man. Mm-hmm. I, I I think uh, so long as the rules apply to everybody, then let the chips fall where they may in the truest sense. Like you really can't complain about it. What makes it maddening is you look around and you're right. You know, it's like you saw, you talk about reluctant uh, defense of Trump. I've given up having that conversation with people. Mm-hmm. And not to mention the fact that, I mean, in a way, the best thing that Trump could do for himself and, and to get ready to ensure re-election would be to be the way he was going into 16 being able to turn to everybody and go, you know what fuck you and take this how you want if he were willing to just call a spade a spade and come out with you know come out hard gloves off maybe fucking win by a landslide all this landslide projection the silent majority secret trump voter shit that, that shit would be magnified wherever however true it is it would be magnified you know, exponentially, mm-hmm. you know, but he, but even he, I mean, you know, how many times are going to ask him to denounce white supremacy? They haven't asked Joe Biden to denounce Antifa once. Mm-hmm. They asked Trump a hundred times a week, you know, will you, will you, you haven't disavowed white supremacy. It's I, I wish, you know, if his campaign was smart, they would take a, every time he has denounced white supremacy and create a, a, you can easily get a 90 second television spot out of it and just run that on a loop him him addressing it over and mm-hmm. over and over and over again and end the question you know the end the commercial is how many times are you going to ask i just cut I to a sc- whole thing, uh, yeah you know? i hear you man because it's, it's so fucking ludicrous it's like you know but that's the problem too is everybody's a chicken shit everybody's afraid of being called a nazi mm-hmm. right and what they don't realize is is that you know it, that's not going to win you anything. It's not going to get you anywhere. Burying your head in the sand 
<clears throat> like that is kind of the equivalent of, you know, you, it's kind of like uh, being in a, a political prison of sorts. And the proverbial big bubba of the political prison has come up behind you and basically said, you know, spread them cheeks, boy, I'm, I'm going in. It's the equivalent of you turning to him and saying, well, will you please lube up first? You, you're still fucked one way or the other. So, you know, anyway. <laughs> I just For, forgive my, my my grotesque analogy, but you know uh, I appreciate your words. Doesn't matter, bro. Say it. I uh, just putting a screen up here behind you. Uh, uh, well, it's it's this. It's not behind us. Uh, it's CNN. It's silent. Pandemic. It's got this this right hand screen. Forty thousand cases. One point one million dollar. Uh, one point one million deaths. And then underneath, like this is straight fear mongering. I heard yesterday because I I'm guilty. You know, once in a while, especially on my cable system, I don't get Fox News. I got to go over to a different system to watch Fox News. And I can't even believe how entertaining Fox News has become to me. They actually have some fun doing what they do. It's, it's okay. But yesterday, the nonstop narrative coming from these jackasses was, we're entering the darkest days of the pandemic, folks. Like, it's straight fear. And I, I think it's interesting that you said, and it, it's made me kind of, so yeah, he's right. Is social media changed the media? Wow. Absolutely. Can you believe? I mean, it's it, well, what? I, I, okay, look at it like this. I mean, the media has always kind of been like this to some degree or another. What's changed is that social media has made it everything so fast and so immediate that it has enabled them to get away with promulgating lies and 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 creating a narrative. I'll give you an example. How many times have you seen? A bullshit headline be just that front page headline every day, right? When you do see retractions and redactions and, and corrections, mm -hmm. it's always like the lower corner on page 26 mm -hmm. a week later. The the lie has already done its damage, right? right? That's what social media has done. It's given these people the ability to, you know, misinform in, you know, faster than a fucking machine gun. And, uh, and so, you know, but yeah, the media's always been screwed and, you know, and you have to look at, you know, what narrative are they propping up and who exactly is, is, is doing what, you know, it's once you start paying attention to it, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. I don't know how it's not more obvious to, uh, the sheep out there and I feel sorry for them. And I guess if, if I have a purpose lately, it has been speaking truth and busting false narratives. I didn't know why Colin Kaepernick was kneeling on the sideline i didn't know what black lives matter was and so i'm, I'm like black lives matter well, his team well, and had gone, was going broke. yeah because he was shit is basically <laughs> but you know i'm 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 like okay well yeah, my black lives matter i guess but then when you look it up oh wait they're talking this is protesting police brutality well, wait a second and i hear in your voice it sounds like we're we share this similarity is i mean i can't watch a, a a video of somebody getting bullied without wanting to get violent on the bully. Like it's revenge. I'm right. like, I want everyone's right. back that's being oppressed or bullied or abused or whatever. <laughs> um, I lost where I was going. <laughs> where was I going with that, JB? <laughs> I can't read your mind. Jim. Sorry, <laughs> started, started with something. <clears throat> Sorry. Huh. Um, and while I have a brain fart, let me just apologize for last night. Um, <laughs> sending you pictures from a drunk jam here, like you're my boyfriend, like, <laughs> and yeah. Well, at um, least you uh, spared me the dick pics. So <laughs> I was going to say, good. I'm most embarrassed about the full nude from bed at three in the morning, but no, that didn't happen. So good. <laughs> I had a couple boys here. I'm like, oh yeah, I think this guy might appreciate, uh, right. The recycle bin full of cans. We were having a good old time, and then so I just took a picture. And, and plus, I, don't... I mean, everybody gets tuned up for the show their own way, man. No value judgment. <laughs> uh, I woke just, up this yeah. morning thinking, I mean, oh, but you, here's why the thing do too. That? You live in fucking Canada. If you're going to do the whole late night beer swill, what the fuck are you drinking Budweiser? Oh, I, I wouldn't wash my ass with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's you convenient. guys have good beer up there, and you're drinking that. That was the yeah. most disappointing thing. You want to get fucked up before you have to work. Oh, dude, hey, man. You know, do your thing, but yeah. it's like you're drinking that fucking horse shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, well, you're right. I'm. You, I, you really like that stuff? No, I'm mostly. It's no, I I never buy that stuff when I go out. 
Uh, I'm a steam whistle guy. I don't know if you know, it's an independent uh, brewery up here. And it, it seems like if, I, I don't go out that much anymore, but if I'm ever ordering, ordering a beer in a bar, it's, it's for whatever reason, it's a green bottle. I like the German Pilsners. So, you know, I can, Heineken's kind of my go-to if they've got nothing else, but Stella, uh, Stella's okay. Even a Rolling Rock. I mean, I don't drink American beer too much, but uh, yeah, I find that uh, Steam Whistle was my go-to. But it uh, it doesn't mix in well with the fridge. You got to keep with the. You guys uh, get a. Can you guys get Blue Moon up there? I've never heard of that one. American beer, it's really good. Yeah. Try it. Yeah, yeah Creemore mm-hmm. Springs is another one I go for. It's big. It's uh, and if you ever drink it on tap, I don't normally, but it's uh, I've got one restaurant that I that I normally drink uh, their tap, the Creemore Springs, and it smacks you in the head. Like it really cut like I I don't know I got a pretty high tolerance for booze but and uh, I was saying to the bartender I'm like dude I'm, this is my second pint I'm feeling drunk he goes oh yeah that steam whistle I'll kick you in the head I never knew there was a so much of a difference between drink and draft and whatnot but anyways what do you got coming up brother as far as shows go or anything interesting going on no 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 uh, no music no until. Uh... No, not not until further notice. I don't know uh, if the if the if the opportunity and the price is right, I'll I'll get back on it. But uh, I'm I'm busy, man. I mean, I'm I do, you know, I'm, I uh, I edit video primarily these days for a few different people, including censored. And uh, I okay. do, um, you know, I run my studio. Sometimes I get a project mixing something, and uh, I got a wood shop and a metal shop in the front of the house. I like to get in there and. Bang, bang around on stuff, make little, make things for people, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm a homebody these days, man. I spent, you know, the, the hub of my adult life uh, sleeping in every other bed but my own, and now it's like for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm home a lot. So it's, I'm, whereas that would bore the shit out of a lot of people, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Are you one of those guys that as soon as you leave the house, you're thinking, I need to get back home. <laughs> Only if I wind up around a lot of people. Oh yeah. I'm if I yeah, I can jump on the bike and go for a ride oh, okay, in the country. Yeah. I'm by myself or you know with one friend or something. I can I can be gone all you know indefinitely. I'm I'm used to being gone. But but uh, yeah, the only time that I ever want to get back home is if I have to be around a bunch of people. Because the more people that are around, the more likely that I'm going to get annoyed by somebody. <laughs> so you wouldn't you don't consider yourself an extrovert then? Uh, not in that, not socially. No, I, nope. I, I can't stand to go to parties. I because I you think like that a guy that like concerts unless I'm playing. Yeah, you think uh, like a guy that takes the stage or is a guitarist in a rock and roll band or you know has a a, a TV show or what. You, you kind of put them in the class of extrovert, but doesn't mean you have to be. I don't know. I'm not an introverted person. If you know, if you and I, if if, if you and I are friends and we're catching up. Mm-hmm. I'm not like sitting there all introverted. I'm, right. I'm quite extroverted, but I'm I'm very socially picky is what it is. And mm-hmm. I don't like, you know, if you spend enough years traveling from place to place where every night you're dealing with drunks, you're dealing with drug addicts, you're you're dealing with people stumbling towards you, potentially spilling God knows what on you and and you don't want to be in in roomfuls of people after a while. At least if you're, you know, unless you got, in my, in my opinion, the people who do that that love that, you got to fucking screw loose, man. You know what I mean? Like you, you want more power to you. Go, mm. go stand there and play dodge the fucking drunk all night. I, I, you know, people come to me and they're cool. You know, somebody walked up to me and he's like, hey man, you know, appreciate you. You know, enjoy your music. You know, you guys be safe out here on the road. You know, can I get a picture? I don't, I don't mind that at all. I, I, I appreciate the feedback and people that have people have a good time. But it's the, you know. The guy that comes over to you wants to sing you, you know, the one song of yours he loves the most full volume at two o'clock in the morning and he's holding, his, spilling his beer all over your fucking t-shirts and stuff. That's the shit that, that's like, you know what, take me the fuck home. I don't want to be around these people. <laughs> Who are you listening to these days music-wise? You got any crushes on new bands? I'm, I'm kind of in the all, all, what do you call it? alternative rock or something like that. I don't know. I listen to 102.1 up here if I'm ever on a station, but alternative rocks, what I slide towards and man, there's no shortage of fresh stuff out there. I don't, I don't put on the old, like I've got an old turntable. Yeah. Once I want to put on the old classics, but for me, it's all new music, but what do you, what are you hitting these days? I'm actually your polar opposite in that respect. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you 
a new band that's come out in any genre in the last decade. Mm -hmm. uh, I pretty much only listen to the stuff that I've always listened to. Now, granted, I mean, there's been a couple people that have been put on my radar where somebody said, hey, man, you know, you, you got to check this band out. And mm -hmm. one out of every 50, you know, might be worth a listen. But mm. uh, I could, you know, I, I like old shit, man. Old yeah. country, old rockabilly, old blues, you know, what I would consider, you know, the real punk rock, like the like 1974 yeah. to 78 you know mm -hmm. what i mean and maybe 80 um you know and stuff like that you know i, I like early prog metal and, and and shit from the 60s and 70s and uh you know hmm. but i listen to the same stuff i always listen to man a lot of rolling stones played around here a lot of motorhead uh you know hank williams johnny cash eddie cochran chuck berry little richard uh those influences definitely come out in in the music that you're doing i just caught a few videos and maybe we'll play some of that um on the way out but uh how about uh like uh, personality wise you watch any of the gavin mckinnis is out there or you know are you plugged into political commentary shows like uh you know, I know anthony or anybody like that like who are you watching these days are you staying well, not really stuff? i mean i, I watch gavin's show because it's entertaining yeah you know, he's funny Gavin's as fuck eh? fucking hilarious oh, yeah. i catch it as much as i'm able to you yeah. know? i work a lot but i but when i, when I can i watch it uh mm -hmm. Not really. Um, <clears throat> occasionally, you know, in the mornings I'll be having coffee, I'll put on YouTube and I'll see a, you know, like Sticks Hexenhammer video or something. Some of his commentary is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have to check that most out. Most YouTube personalities go out of their way to be YouTube personalities mm. and it annoys the shit out of me, mm -hmm. you know. Don't forget to smash that like button. I mean, if one more motherfucker tells me, I'm going to smash him in the fucking mouth. Have you know? seen Kyle shit. Dunnigan's news show yet? Craig News Live? I, I have no idea. Well, oh, Dunnigan does, he does the facial, he he does the face like the mat i don't know he does it virtually somehow but then he does impressions on top of it he's done michael jackson videos and all kinds of videos i'm sure you've seen him right. kyle dunnigan but he's he's doing this parody of uh of a news show and he he talks like this and it's just absolutely hilarious he goes to yeah. technical breaks all the time and i don't know how he got on my radar but it, it uh i landed on his page one day i'm like oh this is genius well, you real quick to go back to the music thing you said you're into a lot of newer stuff mm -hmm. uh not that i tell me a few of the people that you, you've been listening to and i'll see if i've even heard of them let alone uh know anything about them. well i uh, my top two bands floyd number one there's never an, another band that'll ever take the stage that i think hardly will do new my friend no no i'm just saying <laughs> it in as far as like top bands ever <laughs> floyd and then the contrast of uh depeche mode like that depeche mode is still they're still putting out music today and that's kind of like when i was growing up in high school that was the you know the alpha vills and the depeche modes and the cures and stuff like that that was my that was my shit that was my dance uh that was coming out of rock and going into alternative uh the right. smashing pumpkins that i've never been a fan of just put out a song called sear and it sounds like old mode it's really progressive uh it's got a great beat to it um so that surprised me because i've never i've never been a the smashing pumpkins fan i didn't know you had to say the in front of me. it's just smashing pumpkins but it's actually the the smashing pumpkins but yeah that one's one that i haven't been able to put down but like you if i pull up my my music list here i don't know any of these bands like <laughs> they're just songs that you know i've got a, a digital uh music channel that i listen yeah. to yukon blonde is putting out some vicious beats they kind of sound like uh i can't remember that other band i'm trying to compare them to um, let me see here. No, nothing else. These are all um, Tame Impala. They're kind of a really kind of upbeat, um, progressive, alternative. Uh, but no, a lot of these guys, I've never heard of them either, man. <laughs> I just, you know, when he grabs you, it seems like, but I will at the risk of one in 1000 being garbage and, uh, I don't refer music out much. Bonaparte is a guy that does, uh, he's incredibly theatrical. He, I don't know how to describe his genre. It's, um, he's got a little techno, a lot of rock, a little bit of punk. It kind of reminds me of a, I don't know, David Bowie-esque 
but weirder and more theatrical, if you can think, if you can put it there. But uh, he's got, I ripped off one of his songs, and then I had him on the show when I was doing the radio show. Uh, he's got a song called Quarantine, and it's, it's fucking great. Like, you can't tell where the synth comes in and where the guitar blends together. It's really smooth. Uh, and then he's got a, a more uh, progressive uh, band that he does called Mule and Man, but it, that's more dance club stuff. But uh, he's so diverse. He spent, um, he spent I don't know, about six months in, in West Africa, and his next, all his music that came out there was tribal beats with, like, like locals. And <laughs> I don't know. He, half the time he sings in German. So I and I don't even know, but it's the I don't know it's the music and the beats and and uh, he's he's really hard, but uh, yeah, I'll take a chance on on referring Bonaparte to see if that's something you might be into because uh, you know, man, talented as hell and a really nice guy. When I interviewed him, he was just sweet as hell. So right never, you never know what you're getting with these guys when you do interviews, but uh, including yourself. So I appreciate the time, brother. That's right. That's right. I might be the biggest prick on two feet. You know? <laughs> Well, I appreciate your uh, your show and your support uh, of uh, Goad, and maybe I'll get him on the show one day. I don't know if he he does that kind of stuff, but uh, man, you guys provide me with and uh, there's not too many shows that I watch on that channel. Uh, I give them all a chance. I haven't watched Larry Barnes yet because I just haven't gotten there. Copper Cap. Are you into boxing? Um, no. Not really. Okay. I then mean, you no, probably I, wouldn't like it, but but what no, makes I'm Larry's into it show to watch funny it. is the is the banter. But it's it's really Gavin, when Gavin's on there with him. Oh, I didn't know he was on him, there with him. Yeah. yeah, Gavin does co-commentary. He's off camera, but he, oh, okay. he'll ask Larry questions as Larry is uh, assessing fights and such, and and that's where that's where some of the funny ones come in. Yeah. yeah. No, he's he's. Uh, oh, I, I love Gavin. Just go on there and watch hilarious. Larry Barnes' episode when it's uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran, the the No Mas fight. Uh, okay, Gavin has some colorful commentary on there. You'll All know, right. Yeah. Knows. No, I mean, I'm a huge boxing, f less of a boxing fan, more MMA these days. UFC, I just can't get enough of them. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to. Um, watch women beat the living life out of each other and be okay with it. It still well, freaks me out. fight harder than the fucking men. Oh, it's unbelievable. Ruthless. Yeah. And uh, and the blood. So, no, I mean, uh, my Saturday nights, I'm, that's uh, I tape all the boxing and all the UFC I can get. But, uh, oh, I yeah, was told I know you by practiced somebody it, at though. the network, I, I can't say who, but I was told to uh, thank you for your uh, <clears throat> your support of the network and uh, and getting the word out about uh, the truth about Gavin and some of the things you've said. I was told to Yeah, to you know, you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And it's just a true love, man. I, you know, I'm gay for Gavin. And I just, uh, <laughs> Ryan Ryan is just the perfect show host. I love the way he rolls with the punches. There was that one episode when, I don't know if it, it was a put on or whatever, but Gavin was uh, insanely irate. And I put it out there, yeah, to promote them because I think it's a it's a it's great platform and he's got a great message as far as, you know, family, standing up as a man, you know, uh, you know, and I love the way he talks, like it's we're still in the schoolyard in grade six. Like there was no no one was getting hurt with racial slurs, and there were many of them. Uh, we all got them, you know, and it, it was just funny. And so I, I kind of fantasize about going back to those days somehow when we're not all so easily offended. I, I honestly, and I put myself in this category sometimes, especially with social media, I feel like people are just like, they're just looking to be outraged with something. Like outrage culture is just like, oh, what am I going to see now that's going to make me so angry? Well, that's, yes, and that's to me that's indicative of a an overindulged society. When you've had it, that when you've had it so fucking good mm -hmm. that you have to create, like for example, the white supremacy narrative. When was mm -hmm. the last time you saw a pack of Nazi skinheads anywhere? <sighs> so you can okay? fit all the KKK so, in your local Starbucks, and that's well, not an this exaggeration. Is, this is my point. They, they're changing <laughs> definitions. They're changing the value of words of, of communication of language right and so <clears throat> it's how shall i say this uh there's no um when you when you have to create the monster when you have to play dr frankenstein and, and you have to redefine things and, and stitch these things together to create this monster you know you're you're really a society in decline man i mean at that point like like we've had it too good for too long and uh 
I don't know what form it's going to come in, but something's apt to kick us right in the fucking ass, man. And, and, Mm -hmm. you know, I thought maybe at the onset of COVID that that would be it, but (laughs) people have only gotten worse in light of that. So uh, I don't know what it's going to take, man, you know, civil war, nuclear war, a fucking asteroid, but you know, bring it on. (laughs) Yeah. It's almost like how, you know, what, what does it take for us to remember that we're all human and we're all on the same team here? We've really lost that like black, white, I don't care what your color is. Like it, it almost, I, I joke. I well, you I say what's it going to take to remember? I don't know that we've ever known. Yeah. Look throughout history, man. Mm. When, 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 when have you know? For example, the narrative that, like, you know, my 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 granny's a native, you know, Indian, and uh, they you hear these people talk about, oh, you know, before white men come over to North America, you know, the Indians lived in harmonious peace and this, and we need to give the Black Hills back to the Lakota. Okay, well, fine. Well, does that mean they need to give it back to the Pawnee? Who need to give it back to the Cheyenne? We forget that part of history, mm-hmm. right? Conveniently, you know, uh, you say, when will we remember? I say, when will we figure it the fuck out to begin with? Good I think point. throughout human history, uh, we've um, we've never been able to. I, I don't think that people are, I think people are, are even more so than tribalism. People are, you know, down home tribal. You're going to protect your family first. You're going to protect your community second. You're not, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I don't think that's, there, there's no value judgment on that one way or the other. It's just, that's how people are. Let's be honest and say, you know, yeah, I'm going to look out for mine first. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if I don't know you and it comes to, and, and you, me and my best friend or my brother are stranded on a deserted Island, I got a choice enough provisions for two. Mm-hmm. Nice knowing you pal. Yep. Whereas if you're the better friend of mine and it's you and me and a stranger that neither of us know, how do you like your stranger medium rare? Mm. Right. Yeah. So I think that's the, if you were having an honest conversation about it, I think that's how people are. And I think mm-hmm. the, a big part of the problem is that we've been made to feel bad about that. We've been made to, to, um, and one second, my computer's going haywire. We, we've been made to feel bad about it. We've been told it's, it's, it's wrong. It's, 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 it's a bad thing. Fuck you. That's how we are. Let's be honest. That's how everybody is. It, I don't know. get mad when I, I don't get mad when I hear black folks say things like, you know, we need to take care of our people, our neighborhoods, our communities. What's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. You know, Jews do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Arabs do it. The Asian, Eastern Asians do it. You ever been to Chinatown mm-hmm. somewhere, anywhere, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You can walk into a restaurant in Chinatown. Do you, are you greeted by a white or a black person or a Latino person? No. Mm-hmm. You're greeted by a China, Chinese person. Right. You know, so, and this has been my angle as well, <laughs> is that we come from a long line of tribalist, racist, for lack of a better term, like, you know, in the caveman days or, you know, when, when we're less civilized, you know, if, I, I if don't, we I had don't, one I, group. Respectfully, I, di- I disagree. I don't think that racism has anything to do with that level of tribalism. Racism, by its definition, is if I say, listen, Myself and people who come from my stock that look like me are superior to all. Yeah, you okay, I got it. And, I'm and thinking we more determine of... who eats. I, I don't. I don't think that that's inherently true, and except when push comes to shove, and that's my point. You put okay. three people on an island, and there's only enough provisions for two. That's when the Lord of the Flies shit happens. That's when it when it gets real. Mm-hmm. I'm saying in a in a in an ordered society, like at least we in theory live in, when there's plenty of food, plenty of water jobs you know what i mean like we, people don't take it to such extremes that's why this whole narrative about everything is racist everything is 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 ethno driven and motivated bullshit mm-hmm. i never thought you know to, to quote jim go you know jim said it best he said i never gave a second thought to my racial identity until you motherfuckers put me on the defense about it mm. and i think that's how most people you know unless they have an axe to grind it's that, that's how you should feel I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? It's like, no. you know, you want to attack me because I'm fair skinned. You want to attack me because I'm man. You want to attack me because I'm heterosexual or because I, you know, I have a fucking motorhead t-shirt on, whatever it is. It's like at that point, okay, fine. Put me on the defense and watch what I do. But I don't think people go out of their way to look for that. And, I, and I've never met anybody who has, if you're going to have an honest conversation about it, who, how many, when was the last time somebody told you they felt superior to others on, on all fronts? Yeah. Even the most staunch white nationalist would have to admit that you put him on a basketball court with a black dude, he's going to get fucking smoked nine out of 10 times. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, the problem is 
we're not having an honest as a society we're not having an honest conversation everybody is is marginalized to the degree of of you know it's it's basically uh take the echo chamber concept it's a 22 bullet in a boiler room man we're just pinging from pipe to pipe to pipe you know going nowhere so cnn trump attacks cnn for covering covid here's why we do um brother uh yeah i i'm only too happy to put the clips up there because i feel like um you know gavin's speaking truth and that's kind of my job now these days is to kind of is to bust these false narratives so but uh I think they believe more than I do. I think I actually got taken down. My YouTube channel got taken down through a COVID bot because I had COVID in one of my titles. And back then they were censoring everything with COVID or coronavirus in it. But right. now I put a 40 second clip up the other day. They were talking about Copper Cab and how he's simping for Bell. And then Ryan says, well, I don't know if it's a Jim Fannin situation. And Gavin commented back. It was 39 seconds. I clipped it. I put it up on the YouTube channel. Five hours gone. Strike. They didn't even really? swear. Uh, and wow. I don't know who Belle yeah. Delphine is. I know who she is now. She's that e-girl on YouTube that sells her bath water that she runs down her ass. It's kind of fucking <laughs> freaky. But, uh, and Cap, Copper Cab's a, a freak to begin with. But in his last episode, that's all he did was simp for her. But it, there was nothing there other than Ryan saying, oh, yeah, Copper Cab's simpopotamus now for Belle. And I got a community guideline strike. And, you know, so, you I know, know who this woman is, but I'll say this. <laughs> Any woman that is able to sell her spent bath water, <laughs> yeah. more power to you. I am a I thought it was kind of freaky too, yeah. uh, you know, make your fucking money, man. It's perfectly legal to sell bath water. And if these idiots are willing to pay for it, I hope she becomes a fucking millionaire. Oh, she, I have no doubt. She's got to be, yeah. got to be. But uh, anyways, I, mean, I get... wouldn't piss on her if she was on fire. But if these guys want to buy her bath water, like, <laughs> to each your own. Anyways, back to the racial thing is, you know, I've, I've kind of always thought, you know what? Kids are fearful of strangers. They don't. It's not because of their skin color. And, you know, I, when I put it in and I appreciate your thoughts on this, that's not that's not racism. Um, you know, I use the analogy of, you know, when we came together in our tribes, we didn't invite the other colored tribe or the other tribe that spoke a different language over for dinner and have sex. We tried to exterminate them. Like this is, you in know, and that's, cases, but that's why cases, I think yeah. starting our conversations a lot with, or, or, you know, admitting that we're more like Trump than we are unlike him because we're human and these kind of things, you know, I, I see, um, you know, the women's march. Madonna gets up there and she says, you know, she, she's just doing the Trump what Trump's putting out there and she, they don't even get it. So I don't know. I think we'd be better off if we said, yeah, I come from a long line of racism, but I'm getting better at it. We're more tolerant than we've ever been. I mean, you as a collective, we as a collective, um, I think it's, I don't know, somehow, isn't it been there for a long time? Again, no, I mean, if we're going to go with the traditional definition of racism, I I would I don't think the word applies even mm. to that degree of tribalism. Because think about it like this: Let's pretend for a minute you got a, a white tribe and a black tribe, okay? And you've got a third tribe that's bigger, stronger, better armed, and they're able to take at least one of the two of you out. Mm -hmm. Is the enemy of my enemy not my ally when push comes to shove? So I don't think that at the end of the day, race would play into that equation. I, I think that it does come down to tribe because I'll put it like this. Replace that. You got a, a white Irish tribe and a white English tribe. What does race have to do with shit? That's ethnicity at that point. That's mm. culture. That's mm -hmm. shit to do with race. And I guarantee you, if, if history is any indicator, look what happened over there, right? So... I would say to you, be care I know what you were trying to say, mm -hmm. but don't play in, don't accidentally feed that narrative because I don't think racism is the right word. Now you can disagree with me, and we can agree to disagree. I don't give a fuck. But but no, you make a good I point. I don't feel that that it applies because if you were to substitute out said race mm -hmm. and put the same race but different ethnicity in there, would humans behave any differently? known to be pretty predictable my brother 
I got Trainsaw loaded up. Should we play it? Yeah, is it the video, the actual music video? Yeah, it's five minutes and 13 seconds. Play it, man. Am I going to get a YouTube strike for broadcasting this? I own the publishing, so if they do, I'll help you contest it. <laughs> I, I wrote the fucking song, and I, I own the publishing. All right, I'm interested to check it out. Let me see. Boy, it's looking at labor like that. Yeah, it's made it. a hobo out of me. Because this train's bound for nowhere, my friend And it's simply no means to an end Now on iron horses, here when all else fails But you might lose your life living on them rails Are these maniacs, brother? There's some great footage in here, man. It's just playing in the background now. So, well, the maniacs playing the music. Yeah, that's my core band. Uh, uh, Dan Mazer on banjo, banjo Dan, uh, Johnny Lawless on upright bass, myself on guitar and vocals, uh, my cousin Kenneth Bryan on Telecaster, and uh, my friend Donnie Heron from. Um, BR549 and then now Bob Dylan's touring band. Wow, so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And how old's this one? That album was made in uh 2006. I just come off a I, my one regret is I just come off a, a 10 week tour with uh Hank 3 and and we were just spent, man. It was we we literally went in there and just gave it all we got. Most of that record was done in between one and three takes and we just went Wow. Through what this one was in fact, that that fiddle plan, man, Donnie came into the studio and that was literally, he did that in one take, man. And he looks at me after he did it and he's like, you know, if you want me to cut it again, man. And I was just like, don't touch a thing. <laughs> like he just came in there and set that fiddle on fire. And it was literally one take, man. Yeah. And you got the, you're doing the vocal, sir? Yeah, I wrote the song. I'm singing, playing rhythm guitar. I even did the music video. I cut the footage and edited it together and yeah. Nice job, brother. Thanks, man. Very cool. Well, I appreciate the time. I want to keep you on time and get you out of here. But uh, thank you for the uh, the time and the love. I appreciate all that you're doing over on Censored.TV. And, yeah, I'm, I'm sending uh, subscriptions over there all the time. In fact, I've told this story before, I think even on Gavin's show as a caller. Um, I had a guy that uh, used to watch my show on YouTube. And then after the YouTube channel got terminated he found me on facebook and i always screen the people on my facebook before i add them because there's so many bots out there i mean you know the porn bots you can get rid of them but just by looking at their profile but the rest of the people you know i usually say uh thanks for the ad have we met are you a real human i'm just making sure you're not a bot type of thing and this guy goes gavin i'm like gavin he goes yeah dude you turn you turn me on to him you made you you made me a subscriber to Gavin's show because I was watching clips on your channel and watching you call the show and stuff like that. Nice. So, uh, well, turn- if I can make a quick plug, uh, we're actually doing a promo over there until November 1st. Uh, if you use promo code Halloween, lowercase, uh, promo code Halloween will save you 15% off of either a monthly or an annual subscription. And, uh, they're ad- we're adding new shows all the time and uh, you can catch Gavin's show, my Jim Goad show, Peep Squad, uh, Copper Cab's over there. Uh, How many shows you putting whole, out? You have a whole cast of characters over there. Yeah. How many shows you putting out? You doing one a week or something or more? Yeah, we run every Sunday. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. saw that. I just finally logged in because I can't get chat on my app. 
I don't know if I need to update it oh, or what. I see. I see how it is. You, uh, you, you watch Gavin every day, but you don't know how often me and Jim put out beef well, squad. Well, I Loaded. went to I <laughs> went to sign in because when I watched the beef squad, I wanted to see the chat, and I saw that you had said thanks for the support and everything. Like you actually participate, which I think is really cool. I try to answer my messages too. Um, and then I saw someone say Sunday nights are my best. Like, no, I didn't know when you guys dropped. And so yeah, I saw it in the every, comments. Every Somebody said Sunday, yeah, sure. Sunday nights are my best, uh, you know, whatever. And then I looked and I'm like, well, that's five days. If that's five hours old, that means they're dropping at like two o'clock on Sunday. Well, I'm. Well, I'm, no, we're, and we're and what we're trying to do too, man, is we, we want to bump it into a live format. Where yeah. We can equip super chats and take phone calls even we got a phone mm-hmm. line and everything but the the biggest problem is just doing the show remotely we've had some connection hiccups and stuff through obs line skype long story but we're trying to mm-hmm. circumvent that nonsense and get to where we can do the show live that's, that's the ultimate goal awesome yeah um so yeah i i'll uh I, i'm i'm completely in engrossed in football on sunday so i won't be waiting for that to, sunday nights are good though yeah, Sunday football, nights, but anyways, I, yeah, I, I don't... Soccer, or are you talking American? Eagles, football? Philadelphia Eagles, okay. NFL. Okay. I mean, I don't know. There's not too many sports I can watch. See, my home team is the team you can no longer mention. Why? Well, think about where... Oh, I'm the Redskins? i Redskins fan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, I'm not a foreskins guy, but Maryland's a beautiful place. I got engaged, engaged on uh, Chesapeake Bay one time. Didn't work out, but it was a beautiful engagement. <laughs> yeah, the eastern shore of Maryland's gorgeous. It's just the fucking people that suck, you know? Yeah, we were across the Chesapeake Bay from, I don't know, they got a bomb det- detonation location over there where they detonate <laughs> they've got spent a, they've bombs got a, or something. The Navy's, the Navy's got that part of the bay cornered. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but uh, anyways, say I I haven't figured out, or maybe I haven't updated the chat, or maybe they don't have chat, or the sorry the app, the chat on the app. So you have to go to censored.tv to see the chat. Have you seen chat Correct. on you an app? Do yet? it through a browser too. Yeah, I, okay. I haven't been able to see it on the app. I think we're working on that. But, yeah, uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like how it's grown browser. too because you know I've, I said to Gavin too, it would be cool if you could drop like a premiered episode at five o'clock every night so that your fans can come in and kind of chat as it's going out. You know what I mean? Like the live broadcast is kind of beneficial, even if it's not live, if it drops the same time and you have chat, people can kind of get into it kind of on a live basis. So yeah, taking calls is great too. I mean, I love that part about Gavin's show is that he's got access and- uh, Well, he's so quick too, man. It's like he can turn- he, he can turn it on a dime and make it hysterical, even mm-hmm. if the person in question would otherwise be boring. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad he's doing it. well. He sounds like he's up with the subscribers too. I think he said he's got he's up to twelve six or something like that. And uh, uh, more than that, man, we're now we're we're growing all yeah, the time. It's, good, and I love it's, how it's he's a, it's a it's a it's a train you're gonna want to jump on now. People. Yeah, well, I joked the, the other day, not joking, promo. but like, hey. I'm, you know, twice fired, twice canceled. I can be canceled further, but maybe my future's with censored TV. I don't know, but uh, I appreciate well, the uh, next platform. time you call Gavin show, run it by him. <laughs> well, and I like how he's he's brought you guys into the business end of it too. By like, you're gonna bring me subs, you're gonna get a cut. Like that's genius. You know what I mean? Like I, I will say, everyone I will say wins. This about <clears throat> Gavin and his partners, and uh, this applies to all of them. I have. Yeah, I've worked for myself since I was 26, you know, so I, but I do work as an independent contractor through him and other clients doing mm-hmm. video and stuff. And I can tell you right now, I have never once had to play chase the invoice wow. the censored. I've never once had to, you know, I've never been, they've never been late with me that they, they are, they are the most fair and reliable group I could ever contracting with to work for. Awesome. So I, I got nothing bad to say about those guys. Any of them, they're the fantastic crew. Across well, continue to success, my brother. I love you. Thanks for the time, and we'll pick you up again uh, if uh, if you feel so frisky, for lack of a better I'm term. Always frisky, but <laughs> generally speaking, you got to be a pretty girl. <laughs> All right, my brother. Take care, man. All right, we'll talk See soon. You. Peace out.